everyone, it's Jen from the Children's Department at the South County Library. I have a fun craft to do with you today. It's making a nature loom out of um, twigs or branches from your backyard or that you might find along a walk. Um, and I thought that it would be really fun to try, so hopefully we can do it together. I brought a traditional kids loom just to show you what that might look like as well. Uh, that has traditional cotton warping and this is what a weaving would look like. This is actually one that my kids did on a loom like this. Um, but we're basically going to create the same thing uh, with our own warping and we're just going to make that warping right in this open space right here. So again, you can pick up any type of branch. Just make sure it's sturdy and it doesn't snap off when you're going to pull on it. But it can be shaped any, any way and any size that you want. And I just collected some random yarn from my house. You can do the same if you have yarn hanging around or string or ribbon. Um, I grabbed some wax string and some pom-poms and some sequins just because I had them in my craft drawer. And I tried to get some different colors and textures, but you can pick whatever you'd like. Anything will work. And I brought some weaving tools that I have, uh, different sized um, little needles and a comb for tamping down if we need to, but I don't think that we really will because we only have a little space, but they're there if we need them. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing we need to do is create the warping. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to cut a big piece of this heavy duty wax string. I just had that, but you can use anything you want. You can warp it with yarn. Anything will work and you can hold it anyway as well. I'm just gonna hold it this way because that's what feels good. And I'm gonna start tying off on the bottom. And I will try to make two double knots down here. It's always a challenge to do that, but we'll get that started. Do a double knot if you can, because it'll make it really sturdy. Get that on there and keep it tight. Okay, so that's on there. And then the way I would start it is just to bring your string up, up and over the top part and then down, up and over and down behind the bottom and then up and over the top and down again behind that bottom piece, up and over down behind this bottom piece one more time. And then that's all the space that I have. And I'm gonna try to keep the tension a little bit tight. It's not, it's not all that tight, but just so that my warping string doesn't move too much. And this is kind of hard too. I'm gonna hold it with my finger here so I can make another knot. Any way you can do it is fine. So I was able to make a double knot at the bottom. I'm just pulling that tight. And then I will cut the excess string off on both sides. And we have warp in between that V shape. So that's all you need to get a weaving started is just warping. Uh, to weave, you're just going over and under these warping strings and creating a pattern. So I have already cut just a long piece of this blue yarn, which is thick. Um, and it, I'm just going to start from behind and go behind the first warping string and then over the second one, behind the third, over the next one, behind, over, behind. So you can see there's a pattern. It's over, under. So you can always remind yourself and you can check to see, okay, well, if I went under this one, then I have to go over this one. And if I went over here, then I have to go under there. So that's how we're gonna make our first row. So I just did it this way so that we could easily tie off. I'm just gonna do the opposite down here um, and just tie off my bottom piece of the string and just put it in the back so we can't see it. Hopefully that'll just hold it in place. But anyway, we have our first row here. So I'm going back to where I started, and this is under this warping string. So I'm going to go over, 
and I have a long piece, so you can bunch this up if it makes it easier. Now I need to go behind this one, over, so you can see I'm doing the opposite of what there was before. So let me find the bottom of my string. So we're coming up through here. Going, <laughs> it's not that easy, it's kind of slippery. Going behind, coming up under here. And you'll be able to see the pattern much more easily when I get to the end of this row. You'll see the over and under. And the nice thing is you can always check it. If you do a row and it looks like maybe something isn't quite right, you'll be able to tell um, by looking at your previous row, whether you went over and under in the right space or not. So we've got our next row. And I'm just coming up behind and doing the same thing from this side, but just the opposite. So you can see here, now I'm starting to echo that first row because I'm back going over right here. And now I'm gonna go all the way back, just over under the opposite of what's right below it. If I can get it. And I'll show you at the end, it'll be a lot easier to see. You can kind of push down as you're going if you don't want it to be too loose. Okay, so you can kind of see that little pattern there where it's over and under. And I'm just going to end with this color. So the way I'm gonna get rid of it is just by going over a couple, if I can pull it through and then I'm just gonna cut off the rest. So don't worry, you can tuck in your ends at the end. Right now they're just kind of hanging in the back. They can stay there for now. Um, I will do another color to show you what this looks like. I'll do the big white one. I'll just cut a piece, hopefully not too long, because it does make it more challenging when they're really long. So if you're gonna use a big, thick, color, <laughs> big, thick yarn like this one, um, it might be a little bit more difficult as you get into the smaller pieces, but that's fine. Um, so I'm just going to, you can start any way you want, but I can see that the last row I ended underneath here. So I'm gonna start over. I'm gonna pull that through just so it's not so long. Okay, so I'm under, I need to come up over this one, pull it through. Hopefully you'll be able to see the pattern in just a minute, but I'm just going over and under, all the way across. There's not gonna be much space over here in the corner pretty soon. And then I'm just gonna do the same all the way back. So I'm kind of pushing this down a little bit. I'm doing the opposite of what I just did the last time and going back just over and under the warp. So this is pretty fun. It's relaxing. Um, you don't need to worry about messing up. If, you've, if you have a row where you notice that you did the opposite of what you needed to do, it's no big deal. You can take it right out. You can change colors if you don't like the colors. Sometimes when you pull stuff through, it gets a little bit wacky. All right, so here is our finished nature loom. I put in some sequins there, you can do whatever you'd like. 
You can add things over the top, you could add beads, or you can just leave the yarn plain. Um, as you can see in the back, there are some little pieces sticking out. You could tuck those in if you want. I just randomly tucked things in where I could. It's not really gonna show on the other side. It's really very easy. So that's the finished product. And you might get a pet who loves yarn that'll come to do this with you, like mine joined me. And then the best thing about this is that it's kind of a finished piece of art. So if you have a gallery wall already or a shelf where you like to put things that are special to you, you can display it however you'd like. But I actually kind of like it right there. So I hope you guys had fun and you'll give this a try. I'll see you later.